This video shows you how sales, payments and deposits work in Brightpearl. Here's what we're going to cover. Firstly, the concept of prepayment, where you take payment before you invoice, and that's typically going to be in a retail or e-commerce scenario. Then secondly, the concept of payment on account, or payment after you invoice. And then thirdly, reversing and cancelling payments. Here's a sales order that we've just taken over the phone. If I scroll to the bottom, we can see that we've not yet taken payment. So whilst we're on the phone to the customer, we'll hit Take Payment, run the payment through on our separate credit card machine or in a different tab with a virtual terminal, and then once we've taken the payment, we need to record it in Brightpearl. So we'll choose the bank account, and here let's just choose Credit Card, enter the payment reference that we've been given from our card machine, confirm the amount, and then hit Allocate Payment. Because we've not yet invoiced the sale, this is effectively a deposit. And if I go to the Accounting tab, we can actually see the negative balance on here, which technically means that we owe the customer 3831. If your sales are coming in from an e-commerce platform, and you've added bank accounts into the relevant settings, here for example is the Shopify setup, then your sales will be downloaded into Brightpearl along with the sales receipt, giving the same negative balance on the customer's account until you invoice the sale. eBay and Amazon, however, work pretty differently, so have a look at the videos for those specific channels. In the general ledger, which is our accounting database, we can see a sales receipt, an SR, against the credit card with a temporary invoice number. Because we've not yet invoiced the order, this is just a placeholder. Let's go back to the sale. We'd fulfill it to create a goods out note for the warehouse. And then invoice the sale. And you generally invoice batches of sales at the end of the day once they're fully shipped. The sale is now marked as completed, and it's been given an invoice reference. On the general ledger, you can now see the sales invoice transaction, the SI, and the two balance against each other on the accounts receivable because they've got the same invoice number. When I go to the payment allocation screen in the accounting area for this particular customer, you can see there's no outstanding invoice because the prepayment total exactly matches the invoice total. We can see the same thing by going to the accounting mini tab where the customer's account balance is zero. We can also do exactly the same thing with a deposit and then multiple payment installments. So for this order, total $20, let's just take a $5 deposit into our bank account. We don't need to give it a payment reference if we don't have one, and let's just put 5 down as the deposit. That records 5 against the order. Let's take a further payment, again into the bank account of 10, and allocate. And then finally, a completing payment of $5, again into our bank account. And you can see how Brightpool is putting the amount in the box that's still due on the order. Again, because we've not invoiced the sale, we actually owe the customer $20. You'll see this here as a negative balance on the accounting mini tab, and you'll also see it as a negative balance on your accounts receivable, or age debtors screen. And here for Joe Townsend, we owe him 20 Drilling down into that figure, we can see the three sales receipts, the three payments on account for order 100,038. If I go into that order, and then invoice it, everything balances out okay, so the customer's account balance is zero. From the financial history screen, we now have at the very bottom there that sales invoice that matches off all those sales receipts. Now what we're going to do is invoice a sale and put the balance on the customer's account. This is typically where you give them credit. Maybe it's a wholesale order. So here for Max Curley from the company Arquin Supplies, we've got a sale that's fully shipped. We don't have any payment made against the order, so what we'll do is we'll set the payment due to be out 30 days in the future and then save changes and then invoice. That fully completes the sales order and puts the balance on the customer's account. So a positive balance here means the customer owes us. Later, when he actually pays us, I can either go to allocate payment wherever you see an accounting mini tab or we can go to customers, accounts receivable or age debtors. Here's Arquin Supplies with a balance of $700. Clicking the green cash icon on the right hand side takes us to the payment allocation screen where we can see all of this customer's unpaid invoices. What we'll do is we'll record a payment made so he's paid us by cash and he's going to be paying us the full outstanding $700. So let's click pay in full and then click allocate payment. 
That clears his balance with a matching sales receipt. So let's go to the financial history for this contact to see those two transactions. We had the sales invoice and then the sales receipt. Using the payment allocation screen, you can actually clear multiple invoices with a single payment. So here we've got three invoices for a different customer that are now overdue. What I'll do is I'll record these as paid in full, which gives us a balance of 29.53.30. The customer's paid us by credit card, we have a reference number, and we click allocate payment. And that single payment has now cleared off those three outstanding invoices. We can also use this screen to take multiple part payments against an invoice. So here we've got a customer that's got one invoice of 13140 that's fully outstanding. Let's take a part payment of $5,000 into our bank account. That leaves 8140 still to pay. Later he sends us a check for the remaining amount, so let's click pay in full, put a check number in here, into our bank account. That clears the account and there's no more outstanding invoices for this customer. Let's say I just made a mistake with that last payment and I wanted to actually cancel it. There are a number of ways that we could find it. We could go to the contact record and then from the accounting mini tab we could click financial history where we can see the sales receipt for 8140 or we could go to the general ledger where again we can see the most recent transaction is 8140. Regardless of how you get here, what you want to do is you actually want to drill down to the transaction ID itself. This shows the accounting transaction. What we can do here is simply cancel this journal, which puts the balance back on the customer account, ready to receive on the allocate payment screen later. Cancelling a transaction is very different from a refund, however, because a refund is its own separate movement of money. Let's take the scenario where a customer has placed an order for an item where we don't have enough stock. They've also paid in full. So here we've got a recycled paper notebook where we've only got one on hand. The customer wants two, however. They've paid the full 25. So when we reduce the quantity down to one, we owe them $10. Let's first save changes. And if we now invoice this sale, we'd get $10 on account for them to use on the next sales order. However, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to refund that $10 right now. So let's hit Take Payment. We'll go into our payment processing system, whether that's credit card or PayPal or maybe our e-commerce platform. We'll choose the relevant bank account and we'll put a minus payment in here. Let's click Allocate Payment. So we can now see that the total amount paid against this order is $15. The reason we do that is two separate transactions rather than cancelling the 25 and then doing another one for 15 is so that these two, the 25 less the 10, are easier to reconcile against our bank or credit card statement. Sometimes on your accounts receivable or edge debtor screen you'll find customers with an account balance of zero. And for these customers it just so happens that there's an equal value of payments and invoices but they're not actually allocated against each other. So just drop into the payment allocation screen, click pay in full against all the relevant lines, you do have to choose a bank account even though there's no money moving around, and click allocate payment. You'll have to click OK to confirm that the payment total is OK being zero, and this will remove this customer from the accounts receivable list. If you ever see this screen, it means a customer's account has gone into an overpaid status that BrightPearl can't automatically correct and there's a separate video that shows you how to amend this called Correcting Customer Overpayments. What we've seen in this video is taking payment in full before we invoice a sales order and seeing how that prepayment matches against the invoice total. We've taken multiple part payments for a sales order. We've created a sale and invoiced it on account and then used the payment allocation screen to record payment received. And then we've looked at reversing and cancelling payments. You might also want to have a look at these other videos, selling in foreign currencies, PayPal and eBay payments, correcting customer overpayment errors, or writing off small under or overpayments. And that takes us to the end of this video about allocating sales payments and deposits.